Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, War of the Chosen. My name is Cycle, <coughs> and this is the legendary Iron Man Army of Two Run, where we are beating the game with only two soldiers per mission. <coughs> Full disclosure, a uh, little bit of an oopsie happened. Uh, so I was exiting the game and the save file corrupted, which led me to reinstall the game and restore the um, save files from Steam. That again prompted that the last save apparently in Steam was the one beginning of the month. So two things are different than when we have left uh, this uh, playthrough the last time. Number one, instead of uh, South America, we are going to the East Coast. It's still a supply raid, so nothing per se has changed, it's just the area uh, that has changed. However, there was definitely one aspect that had changed, uh, which is uh, the layoff of the co uh, covert ops missions. And we got a bit more lucky with that. We got um, uh, quite some reduced avatar progress. And conveniently enough, on top of it, dodge uh, plus 10. And there's, I think, another dodge plus X mission in here. So that was by no stretch of the imagination um, intended. I also don't know why the save game file corrupted in the first place. It was just the game was shutting down and the entirety of the run was no longer there. And I was really, really pissed for a moment because I would be very, very angry if this run here would be disappearing. We are making such a good uh, progress. Anyways, long story short, Steam unfortunately, uh, Steam fortunately lets you allow to, to get the original files back if you have a uh, um, uh, Steam version. And that's <coughs> this is what I've done. So, long story short, <coughs> we're going into uh, this uh, mission with uh, Renman and Zirkim. I told you we haven't used them for a while. And look at the swagger, Zirkim. <coughs> oh my God, what's wrong with my? <clears throat> throat. I apologize. Sorry. Um, look at the swagger Zirkim. He is dressed in the clothes of uh, the Serpent King. So nice little grappling suit. We're uh, sacrificing one grenade for way more mobility. Both of them are going on to this advent mission and I am expecting nothing short of a very difficult mission. Probably, <clears throat> as with any very difficult mission, we're going to see the uh, chosen ones being involved, in this case, the Warlock. Secondly, we have already seen that there is a lot of Advent in here, so I expect that it's going to be a rather rough mission. As for the run, generally, let's reconcile where we are, <clears throat> because I've seen a couple of uh, comments. Number one. Uh, the main important aspect for us currently is to train Roby and Hawkbite. Both of them need to uh, be super soldiers for the um, all-encompassing fights against the Chosen Ones, as well as for the last mission. I really need as much uh, firepower on them as, uh, as humanly possibly, uh, possible. So uh, improving dodge, improving mobility and improving hit points <coughs> will be key for us. Secondly, um, we still need to just play through um, all of uh, the um, all of the alien rulers to get uh, to the uh, nice little extra equipment. So that's going to happen as well. And lastly, I think we still have an opportunity for some more loot that we could um, that we could get um, some more breakthroughs in the research as well. So we are certainly not done yet. Uh, and of course, we want to have the chosen Correct. weapons. Okay, focusing a bit more onto the actual mission here. I think this is perfect. Timer will not start until we have um, started the mission, uh, until we have lost concealment. So might as well just go in and <coughs> aggressively take a look at uh, where we can find enemies. We know that there are 13 enemies plus most likely the chosen one. We know uh, there is a lot of high ground uh, that we can use to our advantage. And we also can already see that there is a sector pod. All of this is not particularly surprising. 
It's not the first mission. Yeah, let's just first of all go down and see if everything looks fine. It indeed does. Okay, perfect. Will do. Okay. Oh, nice. First enemy sightings. <coughs> So let's start with only one pack for now, mainly because I think that the chosen one will appear afterwards. So getting both of them out of the way certainly would be a good start. We do have um, a lot of tools at our disposal, uh, disposal specifically, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for my throat, but something is certainly not right. So we do have Bladestorm. One way of dealing with it would be just charging in, uh, using that momentum in order to trigger Bladestorm with both of them. That'll, that'll uh, trigger two hits, and we could have run and gun. Might as well take a shot kill one and move back into cover that's option number one okay just putting it out there uh, option number two would be saturation fire hitting both option number three plasma grenade softening them up finishing them i want to save the plasma grenades i somehow also don't want to just charge in although since we're currently not under an immense time pressure, I'm just wondering if we might go a bit closer and wait for them to move directly into us. Again, we don't have any time pressure. Nothing happens until we actually go, uh, go and start the first fight and lose our concealment. So... Not too bad. We know they are there and they're trying to get over here. Grappling. Okay. I'm hoping that they are moving into us so that we simply can uh, use an overwatch in order to hit them. Understood. Moving out. Hostile forces spotted. Interesting enough, there is a second pack right there. Overwatch. Affirmative. Covering now. The Archon Stun Lancer pack certainly is a bit more difficult, simply because it has more hit points. We could start the whole uh, the whole uh, charade here with um, exploding the car, almost killing two of them. I think that's not a bad idea. Yeah, let's go for it. Salvo and a nice little grenade. That's a pretty valuable grenade, to be honest. There we go, 11, 12 points of damage. And all of them do have um, have only one uh, action for the next round. 
100%. Let's start with death from above, which is great. We now have um, we now have not only death from above, but we do have untouchable on Zirkim. Like I said, perfect. Let's see. I mean, we could go for Reaper and basically use the reset uh, method methodology in order to get more uh, turns. But I think we're fine for now. Let's just see how this one here continues. Uh, it's unfortunately a miss, okay. In which case we probably will need to use Reaper. I was considering to not use it. My sword is thirsty. So, this is the secured kill. Plus reset, which prompts also an untouchable and an implacable. I got it, right? So we're now at implacable. We're going to go to here because uh, that okay. is blade master uh, uh, range, blade storm range. Sorry, too much Warcraft three. Uh, blade storm range, and we're going to soften him up. Hopefully killing him with a blade storm or even killing him right away. Okay. It's dead. It has to be dead. Both of them have untouchable, so de, de facto the one enemy cannot damage them. Instead he moves here and that's fine. Okay, so if we were to move to here, okay, that'll automatically ignite us, damn. That's affirmative. Okay, let's try this and kill the officer. Wouldn't necessarily say that that worked out super well. Zirkim uh, missed a shot from just like point blank range. Luckily, we can count on the shotgun. I would appreciate if we could get some of the loot downstairs, no? Yep, that's a way without catching fire. There we go. Superior outloader. We haven't yet seen a chosen one, which I find surprising. I would have really guessed that we were to fight against the Warlock. Apparently he did not show up. Right, so far so good. Let's use our scouting abilities. We're using Conceal.
aggressive uh, move but we still have we still have a backup if he would be uh, spotted out we would have had a backup here with um, handing over actions uh, with advanced teamwork Hmm, I would like to have some more high ground. Unfortunately, that seems to be not possible here. I like the idea of having an overwatch. This here is too far away, and this here appears to be almost too close. Hmm. This here is full cover, but a really bad position because we only have line of sight into this direction. We're taking a defensive route. I don't need too many crates, we're okay. But I really want to make sure that we're not losing any of the two resources. Neither Zirkim nor Random. High ground would allow us to kill both of them. Oh nice. That's another great engage here. If we were if we were to move too close, we would be spotted out. I think this here is the closest we could get without being spotted out. Affirmative, moving out. Which means we're going to overwatch. Reload. And Overwatch. I would want to have this chest here. Unfortunately, it would reveal us if we were to take it. And I don't want to have two packs. Not if I can prevent it and just pull one pack for now. Okay, first things first, I think we should focus on the advanced mech. It's easy to take down. The purifier really can't do much against us. And that was the exact opposite of what I was hoping to achieve. That was the absolute and exact opposite. Get ready for a surprise. We're definitely not moving closer because we don't want to uh, trigger the other pack. This here could might as well be a kill. Yeah. Enemy's down. Nice shot. Okay, too close, too close. Okay, not the most sexy route to take, but I think this here could work. Running. Run and gun into position. 
and there is a 70% chance that this would crit and kill him. I definitely got that one. Eyes on me. We could go in, but I don't want to do that. Instead, got it covered. we're going to Overwatch. Okay, this crate here is marked for removal. So. so that's a problem. We need to get it now. Triggering the other pack. Let's mark the supplies real quick. Advent's locator is down and our transponder is active. Firebrand will handle the pickup. Okay. I mean, one of the things we could do is, I guess, to move to here. And just use saturation fire. Efficient from an ammunition standpoint. And if we were to hit we were to hit uh, the code uh, codices with it, they would die immediately. I was wrong on so many levels. Starting with whether or not the codices would die. The answer is clearly no. They wouldn't. Nice little hit. And now it's time to go in. This one is too far away. Our risk would be to pull an additional pack. I mean, the implacable... I get it. We can get to, uh, to this one here. Probably be somewhat in safety. Um, we're now running into the situation where we do not have enough movement to pull it off again. Uh, second concern slightly is... Um, we do not have an untouchable on Zirkem. We do have one on Renman though. So, the reason why I'm handing it over is purely for the purpose of yeah, of getting that untouchable on him. Unfortunately, that wouldn't work out because somehow we've lost line of sight. Really disappointing. Let's see if we can do something with that world strike. That was really bad. Adjusting aim. When I clicked onto Sirkim, I saw that there were two potential targets available, so my initial impression was we could simply um, shoot this codex here. Unfortunately, it turned out he could only see one. That's really a bummer. Sounding bomb doesn't do much because our weapon was already disabled. Which is the good news. Firebrand is on deck for recovery. 
Keep marking those crates, Metis 1-5. All right. I would say... Let's briefly continue. Um, we certainly could melee attack and kill the Codex here. And I guess that's not such a bad idea. The other option would be to rapid fire and kill the Andromedon. Hmm. Or only to take one shot. No. I was just considering how we could how we could maybe hand over an action item to Zirkim. Zirkim can then kill either of the codices and move out of there. Unfortunately that's not possible. At least not easily. If Zirkin moves, he'll take the overboard shot, which we cannot allow. Reaper is still on cooldown. Moving too far away is also not positive, because we might be missing uh, the Codex, okay, but we certainly can move here mark the supplies and then kill the codex that'll remove the overwatch it's dead. It has to be dead. we're still in placeable which means if we were to move to here blade master is going to trigger here. and we're untouchable so as long as that holds true we're fine um, Zirikin moves target. into cover, and because I don't no want to deal with the last Codex, to be honest, uh, we could just kill the Codex, or alternatively, if we were uh, to use Rapid Fire, we might as well be able to take down... Yeah, probably not. Well, it's actually going to be close. Um, the safer play, believe it or not, is to kill the uh, the Codex here, because if we're killing the Andromedon, there's still a shell left. The shell will hit into Untouchable, and the Codex here currently does have uh, the um, Psionic Bomb on cooldown, which means it'll take a shot. What it will do is it'll teleport to here uh, into a flanking position and just flank a Zirkin who, by the way, has some strange legs. I'm very sorry, my friend, but it seems as if you broke both of your legs and would be hanging on onto the side rail. Sucks being you. So yeah, that's the correct play. Oh, we even got a hair trigger. Lucky us. Nice. That arm is tough. We're pushing them back. Blade Storm misses. It's still moving. We know that the other pack might must be behind. Elsewise, uh, these um, elsewise, he wouldn't move back. This, however, gives us a decent chance to collect some more rewards. If you say so. Can't use run and gun yet. Um, 
don't want to run all the way in. We know there's still a sector port left. Reload and reload. And we got at least two crates. Which, considering that we're doing it with two people, is already double the amount that we got in the last uh, mission. Okay, here's the last pack. Waiting for the last pack. We might as well secure a couple new chests. Yeah, I guess pretty much that's it. That's already three chests secured. Good job, Saiken. Way to go. So only two more chests are even on the field and I'm trying to figure out where they are. Oh, they are already marked. It's over here and up here. We're definitely not getting either of those. Okay, I'll go. There we go. We triggered the last pack. Wow, okay. Holy moly. Well. How you would wish you had a grenade left over, right? I think just from the pure distance I like the idea of going on to high ground. Problem is I'm going to have such a hard time seeing anyone up there. That's probably one of the few options that we do have. Okay, so frostbite. Are we uh, trying to ignore the sector pot? Probably not. Purifier doesn't matter. Andromedon, maybe. Elite, elite Trooper. Shieldbearer will make things worse. Problem is also the percentage chance of hitting them, right? Imagine if we were, we were able to take down the sector pod. How would we do that? I mean, we could quote unquote simply take it out with frostbite and then just hope for the best, but I think there might be a better chance. I'm just worried that Renman here will take a lot of fire in half cover. One way of dealing with it is certainly letting him letting him be untouchable and implaceable. And that would make it way better. 
Do we need Frostbite? Yes or no? Shooting at the sector pod will deal around 30 damage, minus 6, so we're looking at 24, which will almost get it down. Zero chance of a crit, but a very solid chance of hitting it. Okay, that's, that's a very tempting idea, specifically dealing that much damage. If you were to do that, it'll stay at, let's say, 16 hit points, and Renman could kill it, would can, uh, then get um, his um, untouchable and implacable. We do not have, have Reaper, so if he would be untouchable and implacable, hmm. He will just use a shield, uh, uh, to sh a shield for everyone. I mean, we could go like ball steep and stand right here, triggering two blade storms. However, we only have one untouchable, and let's say the sector port is dead. Let's further say the explosion almost kills the um, Andromedon. And let's further say we're standing here and our blade storm hits, then the Andromedon would not be a problem, but we still have two potential hits. It's a risky plan, but what's the alternative? We could frostbite him and then overwatch. I think that's a stupid idea. Let's go, sector pot. Nice little hit. Okay. Running and gunning. Good starter. Sector port explosion is usually only one wide, so this here should not be a problem. Um, yeah, the alternative is semi here, but I think this here is the better uh, the better spot. Even if we do not kill him, we would still have cover. Okay, rapid fire, hundred percent. We're going to go with Chain Shot because Rapid Fire is better than Chain Shot and I want to save the cooldown. That's one hit. I was under the firm impression that we would not take damage. I was wrong. Anyways, moving to here. We're still having Untouchable. Bladestorm has a chance to kill both of them. And we have Untouchable, so we're at max taking one shot. And we should be able to survive that. Mm, too bad, that was the Untouchable. I was hoping they would start with the Andromedon. Now it looks crappy. Because now Bladestorm doesn't kill them anymore. Well, joke's on me. But luckily the shot missed. Now joke's on me. Or on them, because apparently none of their shots hit. Down. Let's 
Very solid uh, shot. Okay, and we can either freeze him. We can either freeze him and wait for next round, or we're trying to kill him. I think we're going for the killing. I think we're going for the killing because then we can give uh, Renvin another untouchable. Sirkim currently has untouchable. Might as well soften up the Andromedon here. And see, Renman can now. Take a shot. Kill this guy. Get untouchable and placeable. It sucks. He always acts first, taking away the untouchable, and now he could take a rear shot. Oh, luckily, uh, he's shooting Zirkim, so Zirkim, of course, also has untouchable. No problem. Luckily, we did not take much burning damage. Now is the perfect timing, by the way, for a nice frostbite. 100%, 94%. I think we're going to use the 94%. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, Elite Purifier. Frozen. Rock and roll. Reload. And... We are setting this guy up. Nice little kill. Check it before you get too close. I'm all out. If you say so. We're still burning, unfortunately. Oh wow. Well, at least the burning stopped. Good to go. Okay, overall, somewhat successful mission. A uh, little bit of a play mistake with the sector pot. It still had two fields of explosion range. I uh, haven't played in a while, so the details are sometimes getting lost. I, uh, I was not 100% sure uh, about the two fields range. Uh, should have probably um, aired more on the side of caution. Oh, yeah. So that could have been played better. And. In the tactical analysis, the whole plan with um, Untouchable and Bladestorm worked well. However, I did not anticipate that the Purifier was the one going first. That's relatively rare. Normally they are going last. So, yeah, that was just uh, risky. Too risky uh, or way more risky than it would have needed to be. Anyways, we got 100 supplies. Uh, a lot of really good loot. The superior outloader is not bad. And we might look into into the black market because we haven't been there in a while. Just want to know what we can buy for Intel. One of the viewers suggested that we buy uh, chosen information. Which I think is not a bad idea, given that we are investing such an, a high amount of uh, time 
such a high amount of time just on the covert ops missions. So that actually is a good idea. Chosen warlock information, 40 intel, half the chosen covert action timer. I think that's not bad. Superior speed is good. Superior scope definitely is good for 25 intel. It is a snatch. And a Colonel Grenadier. Yeah, we're sh sh uh, currently not short on soldiers, but it's nice to know that we could have a backup. Um, I think we're going with the Warlock information uh, because that'll help us to speed up the entire run just a bit. And yeah, other than that, we're pretty much okay. Let's see what we can sell. Finally, the Berserker corpse are, uh, corpses are in high demand. Can certainly sell the auto loader. There we go. We were about to make contact here, and I think we should continue doing so, just to get the North American bonus. Double Agent, for those of you who don't know it, uh, the Continent Bonus Double Agent provides you with a chance of taking over one of uh, Advent's soldiers. And that's actually really, really helpful because it gives us a third soldier, which we elsewise wouldn't be able to get. So, good news. We do have plus 10 on dodge that's really good bad news templar is out for nine days so we can put in another uh, mission before hawkbite is back we could use eight days in order to get into um, into the warlock part three killing him first is not the worst idea to be honest so that'll be a good start um, and we still have enough uh, time left over there was another dodge mission yeah here dodge plus seven ten ten days we definitely want to get that um, and i think we still have enough time yeah supply drop in 11 days before that happens i we would need to get uh, that one mission, which means we can spend uh, eight days here. We can spend eight days here. Good. Who needs a promotion? I think, just out of what I've seen, we might want to promote uh, Wild Child here because she's just on the brink of getting uh, that that uh, Salvo, which is a very important uh, skill. On the other hand, I'm thinking, you know what? We could purchase a full-fledged Colonel Grenadier for 115. So are we wasting uh, valuable resources? But then again, we're not doing it for the reward here. We're actually doing it in order to be able to infiltrate his stronghold and get his incredibly nice uh, uh, rifle. So I suppose, wait a second, Major Plus. Hmm. Although we could put in Mitch. Yeah, I guess why not? Let's put in Mitch and a Grenadier. And Soldier Wounded Low, that's fine. Eight days, she gets a promotion. Yeah, I mean, why not? Understood, Commander. My followers will appreciate the support of your soldiers. Once we do have his hideout, we might be able to actually go and do his mission. Commander, the alien 
Let's continue to make progress on the Avatar project. If we're going to slow them down, we'll need to move fast. Look at that. Commander, the aliens are still moving forward on the Avatar project. Taking out the How many more days until Dragonova lives. is ready? Because once Dragonova is ready, that's our next mission. Once Dragonova here is ready, 11 days. Oh gosh, that takes a while. Once she's ready, we can infiltrate the next facility, which means that is not going to happen this month, because we're for, uh, before that happens, we're going to have the supply drop. That's advanced. Um, Grenades. I mean, we could go for frost bomb, I suppose. It's not bad. Yeah, I wouldn't see many other uses. Frost bomb is okay. We don't have enough um, soldiers to actually use it. And we do have experimental ammunition currently in the queue, so might as well stick with that. We're there we go. Finally. Warlock actively working in this region. So why wouldn't we have double agent as a bonus? It should be green because we do have a tower here. And we do have all of... Oh, wait a second. Do we need two towers? Oh, okay. Well, that is unfortunate. It changes the whole topic a bit. So we're probably forced to build another tower. Yeah, it costs us 250, but I really want the bonus because having a chance for a double agent is way more valuable than 250 resources. All right, here we go. Next mission. I love it. Squad side on this mission is limited to three soldiers. Yeah, in our case, that's not really a problem. So destroy alien relay is not too bad. Hack workstation is actually also not too bad. Plus, I really don't like the major breakthrough. I think it's going to be Eastern Europe, to be honest. I like the Intel reward better than the Eastern European engineer reward because we really don't need another engineer. But on the other hand, the dark event sucks. I don't want to have two additional uh, blocks. Anyways, I'm going to find out what we're going to do in detail. It's probably going to be the Eastern European mission. So might as well fly there. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we are nearing the last 20% of this run. I can uh, very much see how we're going to invade the Warlock soon. I have a bit of a retribution. We're definitely going to fight the Bursa Queen very soon. Uh, so that's going to come up. Uh, she's hiding in a facility. And I'm just waiting for Dragonova to come back. And then we're going to take her on. Uh, so these two things are going to happen very soon. Uh, now than that, before we go to uh, before we go for uh, for it, we need to survive this Guerrilla Ops mission. 
Uh, if you want to see that, uh, tune in the next time that I'm uploading a video and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done it yet. It helps the channel. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Bye bye.